welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about massage for the elderly is Dr. Dietrich Gorman. Dr. Dietrich, America's relaxation doctor, is a board certified family physician who helps individuals discover ways to reduce stress and live a more fulfilled life. In addition to being a physician, Dr. Dietrich is an entrepreneur, speaker, and author of Relaxed and Ready, a simple roadmap to reducing workplace stress and frustration, the adult coloring book, Relaxed and Ready, designed to reduce anxiety levels, and her newest book, Grateful and Ready, a reflective journal to fuel your soul. How are you doing today, Dr. Dietrich? Hey, good, good morning, afternoon, everybody. I'm doing good, Jason. How are you doing? Doing very good. Thank you for joining us again. I'm looking forward to our time together. But before we get started, Dr. Dietrich, for those that are joining us for the live webinar, if you have any questions, type your questions in to the control panel on the right-hand side. And time permitting, we will do everything in our power to get your questions answered. So Dr. Dietrich, I'm gonna turn over to you, Massage for the Elderly. Wonderful, thank you very much again for having me. Um, I'm gonna be talking today about Massage for the Elderly. I'm Dr. Dietrich Gorman, America's Relaxation Doctor. Um, this is a, a disclaimer slide that, you know, all the opinions and um, thoughts are um, just for me and not necessarily uh, from knowledgeable aging, okay, and it doesn't constitute any uh, medical or financial or legal advice. So y'all take a look at that. So just a little bit more about me. Um, I'm America's Relaxation Doctor. I am a board certified family medicine physician. I'm actually a speaker, a blogger, a consultant, and a four-time Amazon bestselling author. And so I help those folks in stressful situations at work and at home learn to incorporate ways of relaxation. And, you know, that's why I'm just so happy to be here today for this talk, because for me, massage is just like, like probably the top one or two ways for me to uh, relax and unwind and just, I just really absolutely love it. And I really feel that if people are willing and able um, to do massage, massage therapy can um, definitely be a part of your health maintenance and stress reduction. Um, so today's uh, topic, the objectives I'm going to be covering are the best types of massages for the elderly, benefits of massage, contraindications for massage, um, and giving your loved one a massage. But first, I want to back up and let's go over just some basics. What is a massage, right? Um, all of you all out there who are listening, um, do you all get massages regularly? It's so great. Um, many people do like them, but some of them don't. And I admit it's not for everybody. But like I said before, for me, it's one of my best forms of relaxation. And so the definition of massage in its simplest form is actually manipulating the body's soft tissues. Now, what are some benefits of massage for the elderly? And actually not just the elderly, kind of everybody, right? It can help you decrease your stress, promote your relaxation, because you're just laying there, just being calm and taking some deep breaths. It can actually help minimize your pain. It can soothe those achy muscles decrease your blood pressure, improve circulation, improve your digestion, improve your mobility. It actually can improve stroke recovery and improve your flexibility and improve your sleep um, among others. There are many, many, many different types of massages that are out there using different techniques, vibrations, hand movements, um, many names, and of course, I'm not going to go into all of them uh, today. Um, I'm just going to cover actually a few, um, some of the most common ones. And I actually just found this uh, graphic on the internet, and there's actually a lot more than this, like tons more, y'all. So what are some of the most common types of massages? I'm going to go over them very briefly. Um, these are the ones that when you think of massage, you may, may think of these. Um, so sweetest massage. Um, this is actually the most common one, and it, it actually involves uh, soft tissue, long strokes, kneading strokes, um, as well as the light rhythmic movements, tapping strokes on the topmost layers of the muscle. And it's actually also combined with um, moving um, some of the joints. Now, the Thai massage, it combines both physical and energetic aspects. Um, it's more of a deep massage. Um, progressing from the feet up, 
it focuses on energy lines of the body with the aim of kind of like removing blockages and stimulating the flow of blood and lymph. And um, the unusual thing about this is that the actual masseuse who's performing the massage uses their body as well um, to help uh, get those manipulations uh, together. And I admit, I haven't had a Thai massage before, but I'm, I'm actually gonna put that on the list to do. It's my, my goal in life to maybe try each massage <laughs> and see how, how it compares and whatnot. Um, moving forward, there's the hot stone massage. Now this is great, I've definitely had this before. And your body, you can see the gentleman in the picture, your body is actually uh, weighted down with some hot, smooth stones um, that they use to massage your body. So that extra warmth is applied to the muscles while you're getting your massage. Then you have the uh, shiatsu massage, and this uses actual gentle stretches with finger pressure, um, working different uh, muscle groups and pressure points. Um, you have your myofascial, this uses gentle pressure that is sustained all the way down to the connective tissue, and this helps to eliminate pain. Um, then you have your sports massage. You might have heard of that one before. And it's, it's kind of a form of deep tissue massage, and it involves the manipulation of those soft tissues um, in a person who is engaged in regular physical activity or sports activities. And so this type of massage is actually used to prevent injuries, um, it helps to prepare the body for athletic events and whatnot. So for a, a good example is like a baseball player. Um, they're always using your arm or they're swinging the bat. And since they're using this arm a lot of the time, this is the one that can get uh, injured. It's, it's, it's being used more. So the masseuse may, on a sports massage, focus more on that, that arm, um, learning to loosen up those muscles and help for future, help to prevent any future injuries. Um, three basic forms of sports massage is like the pre, um, the post, and then also a maintenance massage. Finally, we do have the deep tissue massage. And here the therapist actually uses like the knuckles or the elbows to go down as far as possible. And they even can like go down as far as the bone. And this will help loosen up those tight muscles. So this type of massage, I've had that before. Sometimes it's just kind of like, uh, it's not really a, a relaxing, but after it's done, it feels pretty good. So of course you can always tell the masseuse to lighten it up a bit. So having said that, I feel that there's certain types of massages that are more appropriate for the aging uh, community. And of course you need to take into consideration their, their physical and their, their medical status. Um, but first we do actually have some considerations. So just as there are you know, a variety and extremes of the human body, every single person is different, right? And in the aging population, this is also true. Um, there's some folks out there who are out independent, driving, living, living their life strong, they're robust, they're doing their thing, while others who are even of the same age aren't so mobile, multiple medical issues, um, not thriving, they may be even immobile, but I feel everybody, if they can, is, are, are, can have a massage. And there's some uh, major considerations to be uh, aware of. And a certified uh, masseuse or massage therapist is able to help ascertain some of those as well. Um, another thing that's very, very important to take into consideration are the medications. Um, a majority of the elder folks that are out there have chronic medical issues, not all, but a majority, and thus means you're on medications. And examples could be for like your blood pressure, um, diuretics or water pills, blood thinners, heart medications, cholesterol medications, that kind of thing. And this could possibly make a difference in the massage uh, that is being done, as well as the duration of the massage that you're gonna be have, having. So we'll get into that just a little bit. I wanted to talk about contraindications for having a massage. Contraindications mean something that you really shouldn't do. Okay, you really shouldn't do it. And there are actually a couple of types. You have a relative uh, contraindication, which means consideration and caution should be used um, in deciding. Um, Oh, excuse me, in deciding on what you should do, um, the benefits will outweigh, outweigh the risk. And then you have an absolute contraindication. That means 
don't even think about it unless you you really gonna mess somebody up if you um if you proceed any further and here the risks outweigh the uh benefits so let's talk a little bit more about the relative and the absolute contraindications of massage okay relative contraindications if a person has thin skin so thin skin could be a figurative as well as a literal meaning, right? But here we're going to mean uh, literal. As we get older, you know, one of the changes that our bodies make are, are that our skin gets a little bit thinner. Um, when you have thinner skin, that means you are at an increased risk for having tears, uh, drier skin, um, uh, bruising, that kind of thing. And so you have to be very aware if you want to consider massaging over thin skin. Also, an active infection. If someone is sick or contagious, you really need to wait, okay? Um, other skin infections, um, like I said, um, there's some skin infections that, you know, you may be able to get around if it's more localized, but, you know, all in all, if there's something that's active going, you really kind of don't want to mess, mess with it. Kind of the same thing with a broken bone. Um, you don't want to directly have a massage over a broken bone. Not only does it cause more pain, um, but just be uh, mindful of that. You can also make things worse if you're over a broken bone. Um, folks out there with varicose veins, you need to definitely be careful and mindful of this if you're uh, massaging over a varicose vein. And the reason is you really don't know if that person has like a hidden blood clot in there. Um, and so it's kind of just best to avoid that. Um, undiagnosed uh, lumps and bumps. So if you don't know what it is, just don't mess with it, okay? <laughs> um, a bad heart, a bad heart. So like I, like I stated, massage uh, therapy has definitely a whole bunch of benefits as we discussed. And one of them is actually improving your circulation. Um, but when a person is undergoing a massage in general, this can actually shift blood to different organs. And if a person with significant heart issues receives more blood during a massage, it can actually create a bigger burden and a bigger strain on the heart. So you really don't want to do that. So you may have to decrease the duration of the massage, maybe 15 to 20 minutes versus the hour or two hours. Shorter duration so that the recovery time is a little bit better. Or you can focus on the head, the, the hands, the, the feet, that kind of thing if it is a problem. And I'm not saying that if you do have a heart issue, do not get a massage. I'm not saying that. It's just maybe you should shorten the time interval or actually even better, speak with a doctor first to see if you'll even be a candidate. So absolute contraindications. Remember, these are the ones, don't even think about it, please. Okay, you really don't wanna mess anyone up. Um, some of these are, you know, can be pretty obvious, but they are worth uh, mentioning. Again, I talked about the broken bones. You don't want to massage over something that is acutely injured. Um, the second one is being intoxicated. So if a person is intoxicated with uh, alcohol or drugs, you know, you their sensory uh, perception is altered. Uh, they may not be able to sense pain. They may not be able to react or let you know that something is wrong. So it's best to wait till they're sober to even think about getting a massage because um, it can really cause harm to a person who isn't really aware or in the present, even though they're relaxed. Um, having an infectious skin disease can put the masseuse in danger. You don't want to risk spreading anything. Um, plus, if there's open sores, um, that's not good. Um, shingles, for example, um, is very painful already. So you don't really want to add to that by uh, manipulating over those, those lesions, okay? Um, again, a blood clot. Um, you don't want to risk massaging an area that could uh, be prone to dislodging a blood clot and moving elsewhere in the body and causing more damage. Um, in an acute heart attack or stroke, you definitely don't want to um, engage in any massage um, therapy. Um, and again, first, you know, this is the least of a person's problem is being able to, to relax, uh, having a massage. You definitely want to take care of the issues, these issues at first, and, and then uh, do that. Plus, if you happen to be massaging someone who has, who's had a heart attack and it's because of a clot, again, you can further run the risk of dislodging that clot and traveling somewhere else and causing more damage. So just let things kind of simmer down. Um, it's great that you want to um, have relaxation and whatnot because 
relaxation can decrease the heart rate and improve, you know, a cardiovascular status, but you don't want to do it when there's an acute event that's going on. Then we have burns. This is injured, inflamed skin, minor or major. So really just don't, don't deal with that. Don't mess with that. Now, having said that, in a person who sustained burn injury, you basically want to wait until the person is completely healed. And sometimes, especially if it's a significant burn, they can develop a lot of tough uh, scar tissue, which makes the skin more thick and non-pliable and non-movable. So then at this point, a massage would be ideal, but only after the person has healed from it, because you want to help restore some of that elasticity, but definitely not in an acute burn, uh, burn injury. Then we have major surgery. Um, in a major surgery, a person literally does have an acute trauma. It's a controlled trauma, but it is a, a trauma to the body. Um, so you don't really want to engage in any massage uh, at this point in time. The patient needs to heal. You don't want to disrupt any tissue that's mending and healing. Um, and you, you want them to be at their best before you, can, before you want to even consider uh, doing this type of, 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 of massage. In an open wound, kind of almost the same principle. You don't want to go putting your hands on an open wound. Um, not only does it cause pain, but you could also introduce infection at that point. So just let it heal, okay? And then same principle with a, a post-op wound after a person has undergone surgery. Um, if the wound is now stapled or sutured, you don't wanna risk causing more pain or even disrupting that, that suture or staple uh, with manipulation, okay? So just wait till the person is healed up and feeling better before you engage in um, uh, uh, massage. Then again, uh, acute illness or high fever. When a person has a high fever, basically that's saying that the body is trying to defend itself against something or fight something. And having an massage in an acute illness can actually put the therapist um, or the masseuse at risk of spreading infection. Um, you may actually make the person feel worse, especially if the body is already weakened. So it's best to uh, avoid an acute illness. And then the last point is actually quite major. Many people love massages, they really do, but actually some don't. And people that are out there who don't like them, some of them don't like to be touched for whatever reason, it makes them more anxious. Or if a person is extremely ticklish, um, sometimes a person may be laughing, but it's actually causing them pain when they're tickled. And so a massage may not be the best, uh, best option for a person if they just can't handle it and it'll make them very uncomfortable. So basically, if the person doesn't want to do it, I, I put this in the absolute contraindication uh, column, just don't do it, okay? Okay, having said that, what really would uh, be the best massage for the elderly? Um, I discussed, one would say that, you know, starting off would probably be like the shiatsu, the Swedish or the mild fascial, but again, you know, as you go to a professor, a professional therapist, go by their recommendations. And like I said, a robust elderly person may be able to handle more of the deeper tissue massages or whatnot uh, versus the frail one who could not. Um, so basically just get educated to the different types of massages. But, you know, for a person who is older, thinner skin, uh, maybe a little bit more frail and not as robust, start off with the more superficial uh, massages and see how you go from there. Because in any of these type of massages, you can always communicate to the therapist, you know, ease up a little bit or go a little bit uh, deeper. Okay, giving your loved ones a massage. Now, when I say uh, giving your loved ones a massage, I mean, yes, you can help them, okay? Even if you're not a masseuse. You don't have to be a professional to give some benefits to a person. And even earlier when I talked about the different types of massages, that's really for more of your education uh, so that you can know and be aware that there's many types of massages out there, especially if you decide to go get a professional one, okay? But here, in order for you to give your loved ones a massage, you just need your hands and some goodwill and, and some love, <laughs> okay? And before I keep going, I wanted to give just a couple of disclaimers. Um, if you are in the least bit hesitant about touching someone, 
um, even if it is your loved one, um, just don't do it, okay? Just go ahead and treat them to a professional massage if they really wanna have one. And actually, depending on your area, um, some therapists are actually able to come to you to, to get it done. And so that might be an extra benefit as well. Plus, if you are not quite sure um, about your loved one's medical issues, um, please go ahead and have them contact or you contact on their behalf if you're able to, to find out if they are able to even have a massage by you or a professional massage. Um, so you just need a little bit of preparation, right? Meaning you don't have to have a massage table, okay? You don't have to have all the fancy equipment. You can do it when the person is sitting up in a chair or lying down or um, like laying down in the bed, okay? Um, it can be done in the home setting. It can actually be done in the hospital setting. Just be aware of those contraindications that I discussed. Um, so for example, if someone is in a rehab hospital because they've had like a, a stroke or something like that, you know, this may be something that can actually benefit them. But if they're in the acute hospital setting, you probably want to wait or at least ask the doctor to see if it's possible. Um, because of course, we don't want to do any harm. And of note, in the hospital setting, um, I would recommend asking the doctor or the nurse to ask the doctor um, if you could do a little bit of a, a bedside massage to help. I mean, it just depends, again, like I said, on what the person is there for. Okay, um, now I say this, um, that you can give a massage because honest, quite honestly, I feel that the power of touch is, is tremendous, it's wonderful. Um, when it's done, when the power of touch is done or the touch is done, done with love, compassion, um, empathy, all that stuff, it really has a, a great ability to calm someone down and just relax someone, just period. Um, just even if you're like placing your, your hand on someone on the shoulder or on, on the head with goodwill and good intention, I, I feel that it's very uh, beneficial. And again, you don't have to be a masseuse to do that. And for me, actually, when I'm in the hospital or whatnot, especially with the older folks that are more frail, um, I'll just put uh, my hand on their head, on their shoulder, their arm, and just, you know, kind of send love and warm feelings to them. And um, sometimes I do see them kind of like take a big breath and just kind of like a calming um, big breath. And so I, I really enjoy doing that. And I, I really think it's uh, beneficial. I'm just a really big, a big fan of appropriate touch, healing touch. Okay. So gentle manipulation of the tissue. I want you to pay attention to the verbal and nonverbal cues. They may not, when you're giving your loved ones a massage, you know, they may not, you know, feel like they should speak up or, uh, or, or say something if, if it's too painful or, or if it's too deep. So there could be some guarding or some uh, tensing up of the muscles or some wincing, uh, that kind of thing. So kind of pay attention to those cues and make sure you communicate to them. Let me know if this isn't good for you or if you're not feeling it, if it feels uh, too painful. It's always to be as gentle as possible and let them let you know if you, if you need to be, be a little bit harder, or press a little bit harder. Now, it may be a challenge for some people to lay down or face down what is called the prone position, but you don't have to, like I said. They can lay on their side, they can sit up in a chair, um, uh, or even face it up in bed, okay? You can massage other areas. It doesn't have to always be the back, especially if you're laying uh, uh, face up. Focus on one area. Um, if there's a contraindication for you to massage that area, don't do that area, focus on another area. It just really kind of all depends. Um, head massages are wonderful. Um, even if you can brush a person's hair, but just getting in there and massaging the scalp, if, it, if it's possible, is really soothing. Um, hand massage, especially for those people all their lives who've been using their hands, just getting in there and doing a hand massage can be great. And of course, a foot massage. I mean. That's just like the best, okay? So it doesn't always have to be the back. It could be other extremities in, uh, as well. So the enhancements, what I mean by enhancements are you setting the tone for the loved one, playing nice music. Um, music when they were younger and they really, you know, it's a music that makes them feel great when they listen to it. Um, it might even pep them up or just make them feel happy to hear it again, you know, if they haven't been listening to it already. When they, so like for you um, or me, like when I hear a song from back in the day 
like the the 70s or the 80s i'm like yeah okay i'm feeling good you know it just makes you, it puts you in a different level it makes you feel happier and, and just better so you know tune into the era that they they were growing up in maybe when they were teenagers or 20s or 30s or whatnot and put that kind of music on when you're giving a massage because it really could just help add to that relaxation another one is uh, essential oils i am a big fan of essential oils um that nice scent you know taking deep breath that with that nice calming scent um so just see if they would like some uh, particular scent and then use a nice scented lotion um for your massage when you're doing a massage if, if you can um just make sure the person wouldn't be uh, allergic to it or whatnot and then please please just warm up the lotion before you put it on their skin <laughs> i mean from speaking from experience uh one of the worst things on and they just plop the lotion or the, the oil on there and just put it on there and it's very jarring having cold lotion on a, a warm body that's relaxed it's like ah, ah. You know it kind of tenses you up right away so just make sure you warm that lotion <laughs> and even if you're going to be doing a massage for your loved ones on a more frequent basis go ahead and invest in a warmer or something you know what i mean uh to put that bottle in and then when you pump it out it'll be nice and warm so that's just my two cents about that warm up the lotion <laughs> okay <laughs> so if all else fails you know just go to a professional masseuse you know, if your your loved one massage isn't the best, they don't like it. You know, they they they're like you can do better, or you just don't feel comfortable. Just go get a professional massage, right? And then while you add it, why why don't both of y'all go? You know, both of y'all have a treat, have a day. You know, have a day and get that done. Okay, so suppose this is a bonus. Suppose you aren't able to get a massage. You know, you're you. Uh, your loved one can't give you a massage, you can't go to the, uh, the the therapist's place, they can't come to you, but you really still want that massage. I have some bonus content to share with y'all. <laughs> nice. Okay, um, self-massage is it's actually wonderful. Um, tennis balls are great. So I forgot my prop today, Jason, I'm sorry about that, but a tennis ball can work wonders. You can put a tennis ball on the floor and just kind of roll your feet along that. They can just loosen up some of those muscles in the feet. One other great thing that I learned is that you can put a tennis ball in like a stocking and you can sit in your chair like this and kind of roll around. And then you can also uh, get on the wall and roll up and down on the wall, okay? Of course, you're not laying down or whatnot, but it can really help loosen up those, those tight muscles and especially in a particular area. So just kind of moving up and down on the wall with that tennis ball and that stocking so it won't fall to the ground is, is really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Then there are a multitude of gadgets that are out there, okay, to help with self-massage. Mm -hmm. Too many to, to mention, but you have the uh, non-electrical kinds and then you have, I have an example here of a roller that you don't have need to have any electricity uh, for. Um, just rolling it over those sore areas are wonderful. Um, I mean, it's just too many to, to, to mention. Um, but look into that too, just they're not too expensive. Some of them aren't too expensive. Look into doing that. Um, even if you're at work, you know, you can just roll that out, you know, in between breaks and whatnot, or actually use this when you're giving your, your loved ones a massage. So that's another enhancement that you can actually use. Then finally, there's the TENS unit. Um, this can actually mimic a massage because what it does, you can see those little paddles down there. Um, you can place these on the areas that are tense and uh, uh, put the uh, turn it on and it, it shoots like an electrical current depending on what mode you put it in. Um, the thing is that you just need to be careful, okay? Um, make sure you ask the doctor if it's appropriate or not um, because if you crank that thing up, it can really zap you. It can, it can definitely not turn it can turn mm -hmm. into a not uh, comforting and relaxing moment <laughs> i've been there from uh, personal experience too like it really zaps you if you turn it up too high it's just like <laughs> i mean it won't like kill you that way but it will really sh shock the heck out of you so um pay attention to that okay <laughs> very good okay now um, i'm getting ready to wrap things up but i can't finish this lecture without offering a free gift okay don't y'all want a free gift Absolutely. Of course you do. <laughs> so I've designed an ebook. It's called Your Complete Guide to Having Your Best Massage Ever, even in the time of COVID. I know some of y'all are, are scared out there of going with COVID. 
But if y'all brave enough to go out there, you cannot go without downloading this ebook first so you can get a, a thorough uh, assessment and recommendation as far as going to uh, to get a massage. And so you need to go to www.decreasestresswithmassage.com. That's D-E-C-R-E-A-S-E-T-R-E-S-S-W-I-T-H-M-A-S-S-A-G-E.com. Decreasestresswithmassage.com. I'm telling you, it's a great ebook. Also, I mentioned earlier in the beginning that I am a four-time Amazon best-selling mm -hmm. author. The fourth book is actually an, uh, an anthology, but these three cre are my own creations. So the first book is actually Relaxed and Ready, A Simple Roadmap to Reducing Workplace Stress and Frustration. And this one talks about tackling stressors in the workplace. The second one is a coloring book, Relaxed and Ready, an inspirational coloring book to calm your mind. Mm -hmm. And these have some wonderful inspirational mm -hmm. sayings that can help you further relax while you're coloring. This is another one of my favorite relaxation tools. So that's why this, um, I, I designed this uh, coloring book. And then my, my last creation is actually a journal, Grateful and Ready, a reflective journal to fill your soul. And this mm -hmm. journal is actually designed to improve the quality of your life through self-reflection and journaling. So please go to my website to check these out at uh, drdietrichg.com. That's D-R-D-E-I-T-R-I-C-K-G.com. Mm -hmm. Then you can follow me on all social media. I would really appreciate your support. I do live streams on Facebook. I'm building my YouTube channel, so please subscribe. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, all with the same handle at Dr. Dietrich G. That's D-R-D-E-I-T-R-I-C-K-G. Okay, thank you very much all. I am Dr. Dietrich Gorman. I am a board certified family medicine physician. I am a speaker, best-selling author, consultant, and blogger. I'm also known as America's Relaxation Doctor. And I help those individuals maneuver through life's stressful situation by learning ways to incorporate relaxation. So I thank you very much for having me again. And um, if there's any questions, I will be happy to entertain. Absolutely, thank you, Dr. D. Got a couple questions. Um, you had mentioned one of the benefits of massage is that it can improve digestion. How is that? Okay, great question, great question. Okay, so when you're having a massage, the goal is to aid your body in relaxation, right? And when we're relaxing and calming down and doing our deep breathing, what we're doing is actually activating what's called our parasympathetic nervous system. OK, the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for calming things down. It's signifying to your body that I feel safe. I feel calm. I can rest. I can digest. I can procreate. So when this part of your nervous system is activated, you know, through massage and deep breathing, it's stimulated. And so your digestion, things that are there, it can it can, you know, things are moving. Your guts are, 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 are at increased movement. So digestion is improved and, and activated because you're not in that tense state. I got to flee and fight and um, run for my life. So that's what massage therapy does as far as digestion. It activates that parasympathetic nervous system. And I know personally when I've had prolonged massages, um, I've actually kind of uh, came out of it with a little bit of heartburn. And I'm thinking it's because those gastric juices are now flared up because I'm totally calm and relaxed and my body's ready for a meal and there's no food there, but you know, those gastric juices are ready. And that was because of the parasympathetic nervous system is, is activated and ready to go and get something to eat. <laughs> Very good. So that's what it is. <laughs> um, last question, Dr. Dietrich. So when it comes to either getting massage for myself or let's just say in, uh, a parent's, who's who's aging and there are some concerns what type of questions might i ask of a massage uh, a masseuse to find out as far as the type the duration etc oh that's a really really good question and so what you what you would need to do is make especially if your parent isn't with you what you would need to do is uh, give the therapist uh, an assessment on the your parent's status okay. are they robust you know, are they, you know, not so robust? Are they kind of weak and frail versus are they, you know, really independent and strong and out there? You also want to let them know if they have any type of uh, health or medical issues that would be contraindicated in having a massage. Um, also, um, 
you know, a good place will actually have you fill out an intake form to ask all these questions to see if there's any contraindications. You also want to let them know if the person, uh, if your loved one um, have any like active uh, uh, infections or illnesses or whatnot that are going on too. You also want to make sure that you mention if your, your loved one um, has uh, cancer, okay? Um, some cancers, especially if there's metastasizing, uh, may not be a candidate Having said that though, if a person is like on hospice care or something like that, you still may wanna go ahead and do it and just give the, the, them some quality of life in their final days. So look for an uh, intake form um, that you can fill out to provide to the uh, masseuse or the massage therapist. But then the most important thing is you can communicate to them if they're robust or not, um, if they um, have multiple medical issues and then also the medication that they're on that may um, not allow them to fully participate in a massage. Very good. Dr. Dietrich, you're the best. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> as, as far as Knowledgeable Aging, you can go to our website. You can go to knowledgeableaging.com. Uh, you can see all of our archived and upcoming webinars. Go to YouTube. Uh, type in Knowledgeable Aging. You can see all of our uh, webinars that we put on the website. Usually try to do this uh, two to three times per week. If podcasts are your thing, you can find us on uh, Spotify, Apple Tunes, et cetera. Until next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar, and this is Knowledgeable Aging.